Maybe when Bill Guerin said it's all about winning, he meant it's all about winning trades. Guerin has had no shortage of trade wins since he took over as Wild GM. We'll revisit some of my favorites on today's episode of Locked on Wild. We are your team every day. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we will revisit some of Bill Guerin's biggest trade wins Since he took over as general manager, we'll check in on a uh, former rookie goalie for the Minnesota Wild, as well as the big one, Kevin Fiala for Brock Faber. We'll take a look at all that today here on Locked on Wild. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed member of the uh, Locked on um, Minnesota Wild media group. And I would like to invite you as well to tonight's Locked on Wild live pregame show leading up to tonight's game against the Arizona Coyotes. We will go live at 7 p.m. tonight. We'll take your questions. It'll be a little more of a uh, casual feel than standard episodes. So come hang out and uh, get yourself ready for the game against Arizona here this evening. We mentioned it at the top of the show. Uh, maybe when Bill Guerin said it's all about winning, he was just talking about winning in trades. And he has had no shortage of solid trades that he has made since taking over as wild general manager. But we should probably start with the big one because this is one that is looking better and better as time goes on, it seems. The, of course, Brock Faber for Kevin Fiala mega deal. And let's go back to the start of all this. Uh, The Wilds got to the point with Kevin Fiala where they took him to arbitration, which signified the end of his time here in Minnesota. The Wilds just were not going to be able to give him the long-term deal he was looking for. And so going to arbitration in his final year in Minnesota was kind of the end of the line move. And then at that point it became time to uh, explore trades. And so it kind of put the wild in a tricky situation because every team in the NHL knew that the wild were going to have to trade Fiala in the off season. And, you know, there's been a lot of discussion. There was a lot of discussion at the time. Uh, This show was very much pro keep Kevin Fiala. There were a lot of moving parts to make that work. The Wild decided that they wanted to go in a younger direction and be able to work Matt Boldy into their uh, their salary cap for years to come. That's, that's a whole nother show, but just trying to kind of set the scene for what led to the Kevin Fiala trade. So the Wilds were in a situation where they had to move him in order to get anything in return Uh, because you're not going to go to arbitration with the player more than once. And so once that card has been played, really there isn't much left to, uh, to do. And so it became time to try to find a suitor for Kevin Fiala. But again, operating under that framework of every team knows that you have to trade him. So then they can lowball you. They can say, well, we'll give you this, knowing full well that Bill Guerin is going to have to accept some sort of offer for Kevin Fiala's services. 
And I remember at the time of the trade, there was Bill Guerin did a a press conference breaking it down. And he had a very memorable quote. I remember we talked about it quite a bit in which he said they didn't feel they got what they thought was a good offer for Fiala. And so they didn't necessarily feel the need to wait around and wait for somebody to potentially offer more. Well, holy cow, at this point, he probably heard from the Kings that they were willing to offer Brock Faber and... And he said, I got to take this before they realize that that is too much. Um, it, it, this trade continues to look, even just at the Brock Faber level, like a win. I mean, you look at what Fiala has done with the Kings since he headed to Los Angeles. He had 72 points last year. This year he's at 43, but it's very much what we have become accustomed to seeing with Kevin Fiala is a player who is a he's a great player and he has the capability of putting a team on his back and being somebody that is able to you know is able to carry you through a couple week stretch but he also has games in which he's pretty quiet sounds a lot like what we have been getting from Matt Boldy and Matt Boldy being 22 you can move him into the category of kind of your next core to build around because this wild team, it's going to be incredibly hard for them to contend this year and next year. We know that. We have talked at nauseum about that. And so the fact that you've got Matt Boldy locked in now for the next seven seasons, your hope is that he can get to a more consistent level when he gets to be, say, 25, when the legitimate contention window for this Minnesota Wild team will be open. And so the Wild prioritized him. They have Brock Faber coming in, and as Dylan Lokes wrote for the Hockey News yesterday, Faber has to be considered one of probably the two most likely players to win the Calder Trophy this year. And if he continues at the pace in which he is currently on with 33 points in 52 games, he's on a pace for something like 50 points. You're talking not only about far and away the best rookie season for a wild defenseman ever, but looking like it's going to climb the leaderboard for one of the best rookie seasons for an NHL defenseman of all time. And Faber, 21 years old. You look at all the things that he has been asked to do this season. Time on the power play. Time on the top penalty kill unit. Being the number one defenseman with Jared Spurgeon and Jonas Brodeen out of the lineup for lengthy stretches. It, and he has met every one of those challenges that has been thrown his way. And so I'm going to give Bill Guerin a lot of credit here because he had the foresight to when Los Angeles agreed to send Brock Faber and the first round pick that ended up being Liam Ugrin. You're, it's going to be hard to beat that offer. And so, yeah, at that point, you know, maybe you wait for a little bit um, to see if somebody can up the ante and, and outdo that offer. But there is also a chance that the Kings move on and say, it, we can't wait around forever. So we're going to, we're going to look elsewhere. Um, so I, I think that that was a great decision by Bill Guerin to pull the trigger there because Faber looks Right now, he looks ready to become like the focal point defenseman for this team, again, at the age of 21. So this looks like a huge win for Bill Guerin. And look, Kevin Fiala is a huge part of the Los Angeles Kings. But it's a Los Angeles Kings team right now that is in the midst of a harrowing fall off of the sheer face of the cliff. Uh, they got destroyed last night by the Buffalo Sabres, seven to nothing. So they still have a lot of work to do to get to where they want to go. And so 
there's going to be a lot more pressure on Fiala to try to help them get there. But obviously they wanted a, a guy that they could work in as part of their core right now. The Wilds got a guy that they can build into their core years down the line in Brock Faber. And so I think you have to count that as one of Bill Guerin's bigger trade wins, if not his biggest. And it's crazy to consider you give up a player like Kevin Fiala and you still feel really good about the trade. But I mean, what hasn't Brock Faber done this season? for this Minnesota Wild team. So that's one of Bill Guerin's biggest wins and more credit to him for being able to do that in obviously tough circumstances with everybody else in the league knowing that you were having to trade Kevin Fiala. So I, I think he did plenty, plenty well for, uh, for Faber in that regard. And that's without even knowing what Liam Ogren is going to be able to contribute to this team because he's not, quite ready to help this team out within the next couple of years he will be if he turns into a solid reliable nhl player it's a square win for the minnesota wild so you have not only that but there are have been several other trades that just have looked like some big wins for the minnesota wild since bill Guerin took over I am going to move next to the one that I think took me by the most surprise, but it's hard to not count it as a win as well. Uh, we'll talk about the draft day trade that saw Cam Talbot sent out of town for Gus Bus. That is on the way as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time and we are getting closer to spring and concert season is going to be in full swing. And there is nothing worse than deciding to go to a concert with a group of friends and running into just an exorbitant amount of fees or finding that your seat views are going to be obstructed to see your favorite artists. Game time can help you worry less about those last minute ticket situations. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time offers you killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. They take all of the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. For $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Again, reminder to join us for tonight's live pregame show. Locked on Wild Live will be starting up at 7 o'clock tonight, leading you all the way up to tonight's game against the Arizona Coyotes. We'll talk about the matchup tonight. We will also take your questions. So join us right here on the Lockdown Wild YouTube channel for uh, tonight's live show. We'll be doing plenty more of those going forward, starting them out on Wednesdays here, and uh, we'll be pushing them to Sundays um, throughout the rest of the season. So you can join us for those here as part of Locked on Wild's expanding coverage throughout the rest of the season. So continuing to talk about big trade wins. And maybe before we talk about the Cam Talbot for Philip Gustafson trade, we should back up a little bit and talk about another one that precipitated Marc-Andre Fleury's arrival here in Minnesota. And so I am going to pull an audible here and talk about the Capo Kakinen for Jake Middleton trade as another one of Bill Guerin's big wins. So if you'll recall, back in 2021, 2022, Minnesota Wild were blowing the doors off of every team that they played. They scored a franchise record for goals and just looked like a team in which was a serious contender for the Western Conference. The goaltending 
was a little bit of a work in progress and not necessarily on the Cam Talbot front because Talbot from about the midway point of the season to the end of the season was fantastic. It's just that that number two option for the Minnesota Wild was just not consistently able to uh, to get it done. That, of course, was Capo Kakinen. And you look at what Kakinen did with the Minnesota Wilds, obviously got most of his, he got a good run of starts in 2020, 2021. Uh, to kind of get himself going when he was 16 and 8 with a 2.88 goals against average and a 902 save percentage. Remember, he filled in for a lengthy um, couple of months for Cam Talbot, who got hurt and actually went on a really, really solid run of play to kind of uh, put himself even in remote consideration for the Calder Trophy. But you go to the 2021-2022 season in which he makes 33 starts total, 23 starts for the Wild, but he was 12-8-3 and and just wasn't able to be consistent in the pipes for the Minnesota Wild. And so at the trade deadline, Bill Guerin identified goaltending as a spot in which he wanted to upgrade. And not necessarily... It was more so from the postseason side of things because obviously Kakinen had no postseason experience. Cam Talbot had some, but was looking for a guy that could come in and get the Wild through the rest of the regular season and be an impact performer in the postseason. So he made the decision to send a young goalie at the time, 25 years old, to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for a guy who was not on anybody's trade radar. I remember this vividly because we were trying to come up with options for players for the Wild to acquire at the deadline. Jake Middleton did not come into the conversation at any point. He was a relative unknown for the San Jose Sharks at that point, but was a, uh, a big physical defenseman who... The Wild identified that as a need for their team. They had all of this, all this goal scoring, but it seemed like when they went up against the bowling ball teams in the Central Division that there were some losses that came from it. So Bill Guerin decided that Capo Kakinen was not going to be somebody who was going to factor in to the goalie situation moving forward. So he moved him to San Jose. And if you look at what Kakinen has done since and look let's let's just get it right out there right off the bat San Jose has been terrible not bad terrible for the last few seasons and so it shouldn't necessarily be a surprise that Kakinen comes in and goes two six and one for the Sharks down the stretch in 2021 2022 his peripheral number is almost identical to what he had with Minnesota. 2.86 goals against average and a 916 save percentage. But then you look at what he did in 2022-2023. In 37 games started, 9, 20, and 7. His goals against average jumps up to 3.85. His uh, save percentage drops to 883. He is negative 25 in the goals saved above expected. Not great by any metric. And no, you're not getting a ton of help either. But you look at what has happened to him this year. As a 27-year-old, he now is essentially a backup to Mackenzie Blackwood and is 6-14-2 with a 3.55 goals against average and a 901 save percentage. He is negative uh, 2.1 goals saved above average so far this season. But that doesn't look anywhere like somebody who is like a franchise goalie to build around. And I think the fact that the Sharks went out and acquired Mackenzie Blackwood is another indication that they don't think so either. So that again, not even talking yet about what Middleton has brought to the table, but even there identifying the fact that Kakinen just didn't look like a guy who we view in the same vein as now Jesper Volstead 
didn't look like the goaltender of the future for this team. And so Bill Guerin flips him for Middleton and Jake Middleton has come in. He has been a, um, a big body out on the ice and has, you know, last year, both him and Jared Spurgeon were one of the better defensive pairings in the entirety of the NHL. Middleton for the entire season last year had an on ice goals against of 2.6. And, you know, this year it's balloons, but you think about all of the turnover that has happened on the decor and just that this team has been super inconsistent. But I still consider it a win for Bill Guerin because if Capo Kakinen, you know, rises up and takes that spot, this is not a trade that is made. And Middleton has fit in just fine and has been a top four defenseman for this team ever since. And you look at what he has been able to contribute over these last couple of years. Uh, he is on pace to shatter both his number of hits and blocks from last season to this season. He already has 100 in each category with 30 games yet to be played. Um, he's played in pretty much, I believe he's played in all, he's played in 52 games this year, which I think is every one that the Wild have played so far. He already has set a career high in goals, in points. And so you're looking at a guy who has provided a ton of quality value for the Minnesota Wild. And all it took was a goalie that this team just didn't view as a future guy. And so Bill Guerin takes that situation and he parlays it into a future asset that has been a key part of this decor over these last few seasons. Now let's finish with the second half of the goalie situation because after Marc-Andre Fleury was acquired, Cam Talbot got a little unhappy about uh, his role with the team. And so Bill Guerin then took that situation and used Cam Talbot to flip him for a future asset as well. And so we'll talk about the second half of the goalie situation as one of Bill Guerin's trade wins as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is also brought to you by FanDuel. Now that the NFL season is over, you can get your buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You can bet all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. And speaking of the Minnesota Wild, taking a look at uh, their odds going into tonight's game against the Arizona Coyotes. The Wild are currently minus 120 on the money line. Arizona is plus 100. And my favorite metric once again is taking a look at the anytime goal scorer. Kirill Kaprizov at plus 130, Matt Boldy at plus 175, and Jewel Eriksson is at plus 170. Those are your best values for the Wild tonight against Arizona. So head to fanduel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot today. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. One final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And we invite you to join us tonight at 7 for Lockdown Wild Live. We will get you all ready to rock for tonight's game against the Arizona Coyotes. So hop in. We will take your questions. We'll hang out. We'll have a good time. Uh, that starts at 7 p.m. tonight ahead of tonight's game against Arizona. As we continue to look at some of Bill Guerin's biggest trade wins, so Marc-Andre Fleury in the mix. And again, Fleury's acquisition was a conditional second-round pick that um, ended up being... It, it could have been a first-round pick had the Wilds gone further in the postseason. They did not. And so it ended up just being a uh, second-round pick. 
and uh, Flurry has been with the Minnesota Wilds ever since. So with Flurry in the mix, you have the draft in which um, Flurry is signed to an extension. Cam Talbot's camp did not like that one bit, which led to that infamous exchange between Bill Guerin and Cam Talbot's agent in which Cam Talbot's camp said that we would like this situation rectified by either giving Talbot an extension or doing something else along those lines, hinting at, hey, if you don't think Cam Talbot is good enough to be a number one here, let's send him to a spot where he can be and um, let's let's just not do this 1A, 1B um, arrangement that the Wild were very content with going into the season. And it led to Bill Guerin saying, look, I don't have to do bleep about this situation. Cam Talbot is going to be a member of the Minnesota Wilds, whether he likes it or not. Uh, there's nothing that I as a GM have to do about this. Things got a little quiet. They calmed down over the course of the rest of that day. But then you had a trade that really came out of left field in which the Minnesota Wild acquired young goalie Philip Gustafson for Cam Talbot. This was on July 12th of 2022. After the Kevin Fiala trade, which was on June 29th, of 2022. So at this point, we're like, what's going on? What is happening? And you look at what Philip Gustafson did. So we, what did we know about Philip Gustafson coming in? We knew he was a young goalie. Ottawa was trying to be a playoff team. They just needed a little bit more veteran presence. Gustafson had been inconsistent in net for the senators to where they weren't sure if he was going to be the guy going forward. And so they were more comfortable going with the veteran, going with Cam Talbot to, uh, to lead them between the pipes. And so they deal Philip Gustafson. Gustafson has a season that is worthy of Vesna consideration as he just, just goes insane. Um, ended the season with a record of 22, 9, and 7. With a 2.10 goals against average, a 931 save percentage, and got all star votes. He was, he stepped in and turned out to be the guy for the Minnesota Wild last year. And I know his performance this year has been uneven. He's 15, 13, and two so far this season with a 3.19 goals against average and an 897 save percentage. He's also 25 years old. The Wilds locked him into a three-year deal, which starts, which started this season after last year's performance at three and a half million per, which is pretty middle of the road for goalie salaries. But we knew at that point, we knew at the point that Cam Talbot voiced his displeasure with the arrangement of both him and Marc-Andre Fleury splitting time, we knew at that point Cam Talbot was not coming back. So Bill Guerin, again, in a... And honestly, I, I can't put it in the same vein as the Kevin Fiala situation because it just happened so quickly that there wasn't time for the Wilds to really be backed into a corner because of an unhappy player that demanded a trade. Garen acted quickly, and he got Gustafson. And Talbot in Ottawa, 17-14-2. And, and it got to the end of the season in which the Senators were so far out of the playoffs that they basically benched him. And then this year with the Los Angeles Kings, he was off to a red-hot start and was in the conversation for the Vesna Trophy at the age of 36. His numbers have fallen off considerably since. And so Gustafson, again, still 25, 
So it's not as though his career is over. And I think we view him in a little different light than we do Capo Kakinen. And so for Bill Guerin to be able to get a guy who factors into the mix over the next few seasons considerably and is a natural bridge guy until Jesper Volstead is ready to take over. And then at that point, maybe it makes sense to, to deal him elsewhere. Or you can keep him just as a, a security blanket for Jesper over these next few seasons. There are options for uh, for what to do with Gustafson, but the point being, Philip Gustafson's not a bad return for a guy that is not going to sign with your team after the season is done. There, I, I just I don't think there was even a a small chance that Talbot was going to be sticking around once the season was over, and so. For Bill Guerin to flip Talbot for Philip Gustafson is is another one of his big wins. And that's not even considering some of these other trades that I think we'll have to look at um, in future episodes because of uh, what the Wilds were able to what the Wild were able to do. Obviously, one of the big ones that I liked was Luke Cunning for Nick Benino because the second round pick that the Wilds got in that trade ended up being Murat Huznadinov. Not bad. And Nick Benino was fu- Nick Benino was a, I liked Nick Benino as a center for this Wild team. Obviously he was not retained after that, but he was just fine when he was here. And obviously that Huznadinov pick ends up uh, looking pretty darn good. Uh, Also can't discount being able to flip Greg Pattern to Colorado for Ian Cole. Good old-fashioned hockey trade uh, before the 2021-2022 season. And Cole was great as a third-pairing defenseman. How something that we would love to have uh, at this point in the season. So there have been no shortage of wins for Bill Guerin as a general manager. Uh, Jack McBain traded to Arizona for Vancouver's second round pick in 2022. That pick ended up being Hunter Height. So again, that one looks like that could be a pretty darn good trade as well. And so for as much as things have gone sideways this season, Bill Guerin has done a really good job of taking assets and getting additional value. Uh, Jordan Greenway for a 2023 second round pick that ended up being Riley Height. He's leading the OHL by a mile in points this year. Took an asset that was not going to be part of the long-term plans and flipped him for what looks like an incredibly good pick. So Bill Guerin's had plenty of trade wins as general manager so far. And so as we, as we navigate through this dead period, um, important to give credit where credit is due um, in these instances. So that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, make sure to join us tonight for Locked on Wild Live at 7 before the uh, game against the Arizona Coyotes. We'll take you through all of the particulars for tonight's matchup. So uh, we hope to see you then. Make sure to hit the like button before you uh, sign off for the day. And make sure to hit subscribe if you have not already, uh, either here on YouTube or on your favorite podcast platforms as well, so you don't miss out on any new content from Lockdown Wild. We've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.